Good day. My name is Philip Leroux and I'd just like to share with you a little bit uh, about myself, my life and how I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I was around the age of seven when I happened to be away with my family on a holiday. At that stage I had a younger brother, two years younger than me, and my dad and my mom and my younger sister was about to be born, I believe, a few months later. And as brothers go, uh, we happened to get into a fight that day. And I don't remember what it was about, I don't remember why we fought. But until that time, you know what, I had a pretty much normal upbringing. I grew up in a Christian home. And I'm sure I've heard many times that I needed to be saved. And I knew about heaven and hell, but I didn't really understand much about that. And that day, as I fought with my brother, my dad intervened, and <laughs> instead of just reprimanding me and my brother and telling us how we were wrong and probably giving us a hiding, he did something different. He sat down that day with us and he explained to us that the reason behind our fighting and disobedience and sin was that this world is a sin-cursed world, and that we are all sinners and that that sin has a payment and that payment is death and an eternity in hell in the lake of fire and that all that have sinned against God must go to hell for that sin and he explained to us also that God does not want us to go to hell he loves us so much that he sent his only son Jesus Christ to come to this earth and that Jesus died on the cross for my sin, for the sins of every single person in this earth that ever lived or that will live. And he explained to us that, he, that Jesus with his death on the cross and the shedding of his blood fully paid the price for my sin, for our sin and that he not only died but he was buried but that he rose again victorious over sin and death. And he explained that if we wanted to be saved, we simply had to trust in Jesus and Him alone and ask Him to save us and to forgive us. And that day I was convicted that I was a sinner. By the Lord's grace and mercy, He convicted me that I was a sinner. And my understanding of sin really was, you know, I was being disobedient to my parents. I was fighting with my brother. I, I didn't have a big understanding of sin, but I knew that I was a sinner and that if I were to die at that, on that day, I was guilty and I'd, I would have to go to hell for my sin. And so I, by the Lord's grace, prayed that day, believing that Jesus fully paid the price for my sin and asked Him to save me and to forgive me and to make me new. And praise the Lord, that's what He did, because He promises us in His Word that if we trust in Him and ask Him to save us, that He will do so. You know what, then, I was almost seven years old at that stage, so I wasn't very old. I'm 35 now. And as the time went by, He worked in my life. And I know that there's times that I didn't really walk with Him as I should have. But He was always gracious and He promises that if we trust in Him to save us, that He will never leave us, that He will never forsake us, and that we will always be saved if we've truly placed our faith and trust in Him alone. And that He starts a good work in us on that day. And so as the time went by, the Lord Jesus kept working in my life through His Holy Spirit that He gives to us to indwell us. And He has shown me over time things in my life that needed to change. He has shown me things that needed to, to be removed. And by His grace, He's done a lot of that. And I know He's still continuing that good work that He started in me on that day. And I praise Him for that. And so to have His peace, to have His grace, His wisdom, His power available to us, and to have His presence in my life, I cannot explain how wonderful that is. To open His Word and to have Him reveal things and show things in His Word that I've never understood before and to have Him 
speak to me through his word, use it to convict me, use it to change me. And the ability to pray to him about anything, to have a relationship with a living creator God, that is one of the most amazing and most wonderful things that we can possibly have. And so it's my prayer that as I continue sharing a little bit of this, that you will also come to know Him as your Lord and Savior. You know, one of the things that the Lord did in my life after saving me is to give me a desire to share the Gospel, to tell people about their need for a Savior. So, we all know that this world is not perfect. We know that it's full of sin and problems. But what you might not know is that Roman Revelation 20 Verse 11 to 15 says the following, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which, which is a book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It sounds frightening, but this is real. God says that all whose names are not written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. And we know that the Bible explains that the lake of fire is a fire, it's a pit of fire that burns forever and ever. And unlike a fire that we can die in, in on this earth where you hurt and are in immense pain for a while, this fire continues forever and you endure it for it all eternity. And that's what we deserve for our sin. Revelation 21 verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have a part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And that's the fact. It says even all liars and I think if you're honest with yourself, we know that there's no one on this earth that have not lied. There's no one on this earth that are perfect and that are without sin. You know, Romans 3.23 tells us that we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. And that's just the truth. There is no one that's not a sinner. And Romans 6.23 says that wages of a payment for our sin is a death. And so that is the problem that we are all sitting with, that we are all lost, that we are all sinners deserving of dying and being punished for all eternity for our sin. But the good news is, and this is as you can read in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, that Jesus Christ God's Son came to this earth almost around 2,000 years ago and He was born of a virgin, a miraculous birth. And He lived on this earth for 33 years, the last three of those years He taught people, He healed people, He had disciples that followed Him. And through all of that time, through all 33 years on this earth, because it's God, who came in the form of man to his earth. He never sinned. He never once spoke a word in, wrong, in, in, a, in a wrong type of anger. He never once had the wrong thought. He, was, he got hungry just like we do. He felt pain just like we do. He was fully man, yet he was fully God, and he never once sinned. And Jesus is a perfect Lamb of God, was placed on the cross, for our sins. He was beaten. His blood flowed as his nails went through his hands as a crown of thorns were placed on his head and pressed in. 
as he was whipped and beaten, his beard being plucked out. And there on the cross, we learn in John 19, verse 30, his last words, it is finished. Or if you take the direct translation, it is paid in full. What did he mean? He meant that the price for our sin was fully and completely paid for. And then he died. He gave up his spirit, gave up his last breath, and he died. And he was placed in a tomb. And three days later, praise the Lord, he rose from the dead, victorious over sin and death. And so Jesus paid that price. He is a Messiah that the prophet spoke about, that Moses, that the psalmist, and so many others were looking forward to coming because He came to pay the price for our sins. And He fully paid that price. And that is the amazing truth. You know, Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. The last part of that says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we can praise God that Jesus paid the price for our sins. But what about you? What do you do with that truth? Because just knowing that truth is not enough. You might say to yourself, you know what, I'm not that bad. I'm not a sinner. I don't really think I have much to worry about. You know, I, I really believe my good should outweigh, outweigh my, my bad. In Romans 3 verse 10, it says, There is none righteous, no, not one. Verse 11, There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. There is none that are righteous. So you might think you are righteous enough, but God says there is none that are righteous. And so that's a scary part. The people think that their good works can get them to heaven. They think that you know, going to church, being a member in a church, being baptized, being sprinkled, taking communion, uh, being religious of any religion in the world, that those things will get them into heaven one day. And God says that is not the case. He says, in Isaiah 64 verse 6, it says, Our good works are like filthy rags before God. God doesn't see us the way we see ourselves. And we have to understand that. And we have to admit that we are sinners. And that nothing we do, doesn't matter how much money we give away, doesn't matter how good we are to people around us, doesn't matter how good we are to anyone, or even to the whole world if we're able to be, nothing that we do can save us. Not even saying a prayer in itself can save us. So the Bible says that the demons believe and they know that they are lost. And so Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9 says the following. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Did you catch that? We are not saved by works, it's by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ alone. So how can we be saved? Nothing we do can save ourselves. Nothing we do can give us eternal life. Jesus Christ already fully and finally paid the price for our sins. And so Romans 10 Verse 9 and 10 says the following, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's believing in our heart that Jesus Christ fully paid the price for your sin, that He was buried, that He rose again from the dead, having paid that price, having won a victory, 
and calling on Him with your mouth, asking Him to save you. You have to come to Him in genuine faith and believe Him that He paid the price for your sin, that He died for you in your place, took your sin, took everyone's sin upon Himself. And you have to simply ask Him to save you, believing that He fully paid the price for your sin and rose again from the dead. And you know what? If you come to Him now, and simply bow the knee and ask Him to save you, believing this, he will save you. He is faithful to save you and to give you eternal life and to give you His Holy Spirit to come and live in you right now. And my prayer is that that is exactly what you will do if you have not yet trusted in Him. And when He says that we have a wonderful hope, He says we have a hope that we can look forward to Him coming again in the clouds to take us away. We have a hope that it doesn't matter if we die today or tomorrow. We will be united with Him in heaven because we trusted in Him. Because He paid the price for our sins and we accepted that gift. And my prayer is that you, if you have not done so, might accept that gift today. 